Pond or pwned, I decided to call it this morning. I was in the last chapter of Leviticus this morning, and uh, it's all about, and I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do with this. Father, please tell me what in the world, Holy Spirit, guide me, tell me what I'm supposed to talk about, because um, it's all about like redeeming certain types of property, like uh, basically for people, it sounds like people could kind of like use the priesthood, because uh, Leviticus is all about the law for the Levites, for the priests, um, and the people too, and the people and the priests, and sort of their, their tango, and it made it sound like people could sell their things to the priests, and then buy them back with a slight increase, and then, but if they waited to the year of Jubilee, the year of redemption, and uh, then they would just get all their stuff back. So every seven years, they were just like, uh, but if they wanted to buy it back, they had to pay for it up up to that year of Jubilee, and there's this whole elaborate scheme, schematic for how to use the, the priesthood, almost like a pawn shop, and I was like, glad that's gone, because that no doubt would be used, uh, I could easily see how human nature twists that to corrupt purposes. I could also see how it would be helpful and holy. Um, but it just got me thinking about how God, how, how is God like a pawn shop? How can I make that metaphor work? And I found it interesting, I don't know if this completely applies to Leviticus, but this is what it got me thinking about. What God is asking of me, of us, of you, of his creation, is indeed to bring all that we have of value and sell it to him. Sell, uh, much like Christ said, the kingdom of heaven over and over again is like a, um, you know, a jewel of great price, that a pearl of great price that someone sold all they had in order to get, or a... Uh, a treasure in a field and a man sold all he had in order to buy that field in order that he might have that treasure. Thusly, in uh, all paradigms, current and past, present, future, uh, God is constantly asking us to sell everything we have for His grace, in pursuit of His grace, to set aside every Thing in pursuit of him to sell it all to him and if we want it back then sometimes he'll even let us take it back at a price and it'll cost us uh, more than the giving and the giving in this case is free so it's always going to cost more but then to try to reassume uh, control or valuation of other things, the cost is not monetary, but the cost is spiritual. The cost is um, difficulty in Congress with God. You'll find, I've found, my walk more difficult when I try to reassume any control of that which I valued at any point uh, equal to or above that of Christ himself, that of the creator of the universe himself, themselves. But then the beautiful thing is, in lending, in giving, in selling uh, all that you have to God, to this pawn shop, in, in that uh, time period of redemption, until that jubilee, that celebration of that word jubilee, um, all those things are actually redeemed and returned to you in obedience and blessing to walk with that single focus is what we're created for we get so distracted by everything don't we I know I do and it's not like God even takes us out of the world and so the, the struggle remains the same and the need for support and uh, clean thought and clean action and guidance remains the same but to remove everything but him to sell everything but him to him to him yeah everything but him to him and we 
in return, that's all we have. We are left with nothing but God, which is exactly what we were designed to be. But the beauty is in the year of Jubilee, he redeems those things to us. He's redeemed those things in our separation from them. I mean, I know if you've ever uh, fasted for anything, uh, for God as opposed to just for yourself or your body, um, you've learned this in microcosm, that that which you give up to God truly and fully and experience that, uh, that focus and that the beauty of relying on nothing but Him, when it is returned to you, uh, its value is in some ways, quote unquote, sadly lessened, but its value is properly lessened and that the lesson has been taught that it, it never did for you what it, you thought it did. And now it has been redeemed to the truth of its purpose, which is just sometimes a simple joy, um, you know, uh, uh, just a thing. So many things we cling to are merely things. So all I want to exhort you with this morning is just to continue to lay that down. If you haven't started laying anything down, I was talking the other day about slavery, if you haven't uh, laid any of your slave mantles down, then I would say take them into the pawn shop. I would say take them in one by one if you have to. If you have the strength, take in everything. Lay it at the feet of Jehovah. Take it to the temple. Sell it. We are now the Levites. Sell it to yourself. Lay it down as a sacrifice. Let it be redeemed. Return not to it. Cling to nothing but Him in times of tempest, trouble, storm. Because everything else is temporal or at worst is literally drawing you into death. Into sin, death, darkness, separation from God. And I tell you, to be in God is the most blissful, right joyful, true, still tricky, still hard, still a challenge, still a suffering, but it's right with a capital R, holy with a capital H, beautiful with a capital B. Pawn everything you have. Or then the other one is your only option. Pawned or pwned. Pwned by this world, pwned by the very things that you refuse to, to sell. Sell it all. Count it all as loss. And Christ as gain. I speak to you in love and truth this morning. Peace be unto you. Amen and Selah.